Welcome back to Realms and Roleplay presents Sovereign of Death. Uh, where we last left off, our heroes had just joined up with the Zondarian army and reunited with some old friends, Faruna and Zymes, uh, who they met back in Stone Snarry way back in session one. Um, so, you all have reunited. Um, I'm going to say some time has passed. It's probably late afternoon now. And um, uh, Antigon Alfeather is ho holding um, sort of a war council. Um, and he asks you all to be there. Um, is there anything you'd like to do before the war council starts? No, I, I, we're on a timetable, in my opinion. <laughs> I've had a vision of some very terrible events occurring. So, like, let's have that war council now. Okay. I do... I do want to feed the cat real quick, but that won't take any time. Okay. So you uh, feed Kit, and uh, Kit looks very happy. Um, and then you all head to the... Kitties are awesome. And then you head to the War Council meeting. And um, <clears throat> so while you're there, you see some scouts uh, show up, and they are like, um, um, Commander Alfeather, we've scouted ahead. And we've seen that the enemy has gathered at the palace. We believe that's where um, uh, Representative Swan Virgil is holed up. Um, and another the palace is the same as the castle, right? Uh, so I don't know. You could ask. Oh, I is, is is the palace the same as the, as the castle? You see um, another scout. Um, uh, speak up and is like uh, uh, no uh, there's a castle on the um, opposite side of the island and it looks like it belonged to the Swan Virgil family it's their personal estate I feel like we've got uh, more urgent matters than one corrupt politician uh, um, Representative Alfeather speaks up and he says well if Churlish is here. We need to apprehend him. We don't want him to slip through our fingers. Okay, yes. First and foremost, we need to know what information you have because there might be something bigger going on here than just Churlish. I mean, he's wrapped up in it for sure, but... You see, uh, he looks uh, over at Faruna and Zymes and they kind of nod to him. He says, um, well, we were partnered with the Destined and we were attempting to resurrect the humans and restore balance to the earth, to Yishan. However, um, it seems like Churlish and a group of radicals partnered themselves with this sovereign of death in order to stop us and prevent that from happening. Wait. So why do they want the human? Well, um, and at this point, Mady, you, are you still an elf? Yes. Okay, so he's like, well, we believe that there is um, one remaining human, somehow. Um, and we have word that she's been spotted on Broken Rock. That would be wild. Potent potentially, but who could say? Broken Rock is a big place. It Super is weird. Indeed a big price. We believe that we need to protect this human. She is of the utmost importance. Uh, sure. Okay, wait. So, what? It, the Destin want to resurrect humans. Were you aligned with, uh, what's his name from Stone Snarry? Alistair. Uh, Alistair Wormweather was a zealot, and it seems like a traitor. He was okay. working along with Swan Virgil and the Sovereign of Death, according to my scouts. Uh, as was a dragon born, a half dragon lady in Stone Snarry as well. I'm not aware of any. I immediately forgot her name, but I have it written down. Uh, Runewelder, General Runewelder. You see, um, he takes a moment and he's like, What, what happened to General Runewelder? She attacked Stone Snarry with a big dragon and burned it. Is she still alive? Who knows? <laughs> Arya, do you shake your head no? 
And then I immediately stop doing so. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Once she says, who knows? (laughs) He um, notices that and he says, well, Tiberia was my niece. And she strayed away from the path, but I hope that she's okay wherever she is. May she rest in nieces! (laughs) Did you say that? (laughs) Yes. <laughs> you see, um... To be clear, I remember, uh, after that, I, I say, to be clear, I remember nothing of what happened. I hope your niece is okay. <laughs> uh, he's like, you have a strange collection of friends, but I appreciate your sentiment. Um... um but she, just so we're clear, I'm very sorry that, uh, that you don't know where your niece is, uh, and hopefully nothing bad happened to her, but she, we... We saw her ride into Stone Snarry on a big dragon and burn the city down. I mean, Zymes was there, and Feruna was there. Yes, she should be brought to justice for her actions. This... Right, so she was also aligned with Alistair and Churlish. It seems things are worse than I thought. Right. Um, if there is more to this, I'm not aware of the Sovereign of Death, so it would be unwise of us to attack whoever that is, without knowledge of what their powers are. I think we can learn more from Churlish. Okay, but if he's at the palace, so is... Uh, oh, he's at the castle, right? Are the castle and the palace the same? No. They're different. Wait. Okay. So, in Broken Rock, there is a palace, which is where we rescued Marty and Keith, and where Churlish had his court. And then there's also a castle somewhere else. Yeah, it's just like how the president lives in the White House, but rich people can have mansions. Like, that kind of deal. Okay. Can I... (laughs) Before we go any further, I want to roll insight to see if he meant it when he said that he wanted to protect the human. Mm -hmm. Good call. Okay, so... 18. Yes, so you feel like um, uh, Antigon his loyalties are to the people and you think that he believes he's doing what's best for the for yashan and for the people by protecting uh the last human and bringing the human race back okay what does uh resurrecting the human race look like for you what does it take is it dark magic what happens do human do the same humans that lived a thousand years ago just suddenly reappear um, or are we like doing some dark magic to raise their skeletons and then their skeletons are just zombies? Um, you see, he's like, I don't believe that they'll be zombies. However, the goings on of how it works is beyond me. The leader of the Destin is back in Zandara protecting the city, but he could tell you more about the specifics. It seems, it just seems like that isn't how magic works without getting into some real dark, nasty stuff. Uh, you see, he's like, I'm not a fan of dark magic, and it usually only leads to ruin, but if this is the will of the people, and we can find a way to do it without drastic repercussions, then we have to at least try or investigate it. However, it seems like our goals and those of the Sovereign of Death don't align. Okay, but the Sovereign of Death also wants the last human. We heard that from uh, their queen. Do you know what for? They didn't say, but oh, I, I sort of thought you guys were working with them because every other Destined member we've come in contact with has been um, aligned with them. Hmm. You see, he kind of whispers something to one of his scouts. Um, Did I hear it? <laughs> you can roll perception. Nah, natural 20. Oh my gosh. Okay. So he whispers... Um, send word back to Zandara to have all the destined um, detained or under guard until I return. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that call from him. Um, So you see, he's like, I wasn't aware of the destined's involvement, but this is something we'll have to resolve. But you knew Alistair was involved. You knew your niece was involved. You knew Churlish was involved. That's three destined right there. Uh, Well, Alistair was an elected representative. Um, and the Destined are a separate entity that operate outside of the governing bodies of Yishan. He was wearing a Destined pin. 
Thugs. Putting aside who's wearing pins and when, my real question is, where from the data we have, where is the Sovereign of Death? And where is uh, Captain Jump Skipper? Because he killed me. <laughs> you see the scout speaks up and he's like, um, we have reason to believe that the one known as Skip Glider is with Churlish at, okay. the, at the castle. And that's where my... Hey, uh, no, that's where um, the elder son is. Um, yes, so you know, he went to get you feet. know that elder son went to no. the palace. He was in the palace. palace. <laughs> I know it's. But this is the house boat thing all, all over, over again. Let's, let's refer. No. Let's refer to the castle as Churlish's. Who's on first? Wait, <laughs> Churlish's house. Churlish's house is is, is where Churlish is. Elder son went to the royal palace. Uh, right, to... and so my okay, so my parents are at Churlish's house. Palace. No, your parents. Everyone's at the palace. Your parents. Except for Churlish and Skip Glider. The palace to. Right. Yeah, everyone's at the palace. Churlish is at his house. Oh, I'm, Skip I'm Glider, sorry, that right? was confusing. Skip Glider is with <laughs> Churlish at his house. Right. Yes, I'm sorry that was confusing. That's great. <laughs> okay. I will put aside my revenge to uh, save the people I care about. Let's do this. Okay, well, I, so I don't think we can charge into the palace without getting information from Churlish. But look at how many people we have here! I think we have to They've go to the castle first. They've all got level first. seven spells. You see, Zymie says, says um, I think that the elf is correct, but maybe we can have, maybe we can attack both places at once. If we reveal our hand, no one knows that we're here. And if we attack, then our position and our power will be known to the enemy. But he just said that we had to get, we had to find out from Churlish more about the big bad before we go fight the big bad so that we can know whether we can kill it, right? Yeah, so as she says that, Antigon's like, I don't believe that that's the best tactic. We should know our enemy before we attack. Um, and you see Zymies looks really uh, frustrated and Faruna uh, touches her shoulder and she's like, we'll do as you think uh, is best, um, Commander Alfeather. And he nods. Um, so he, he looks to you all and he says, if you believe that, uh, Churlish is at his castle and we can apprehend him, then we should act now. That's the information we think we have. Okay. Well, prepare yourself. I'm pretty sure you told us that information. He did. So. He just told us that. <laughs> the, the scout is like, yes, I, I just found out that information. Great. Yeah. Um, right. So, like, <laughs> so I, you believe it, so we believe it, because you just told us. So uh, It's not like we believe it. We're just trusting you. you I see. think we're going to have to go to the castle first. I mean, I feel like that seems to be the prudent way. We go. We do that quick. Is it the... Okay. Churlish's man. Churlish's house. house. Churlish's house. Okay. <laughs> Churlish's manor is a castle. The palace is. You just where said he... manor. Manor wasn't you. <laughs> well, I'm using it to distinguish between the two for my own well-being. <laughs> so as you all are talking about the specifics of palace <laughs> and the castles, you see, um, uh, Alfeather stands up and he's like, "We're gonna go to Churlish's house and we're gonna kill him." That's Great. what we're gonna do. Okay, cool. Okay. That's cool. that's where my revenge is anyway. And I don't want to sell like, call it, uh, but I call first. Skip Glider. Okay, I, I have a quick question. To all of us? I whisper to Wynn. Yes. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. I whisper to, uh, to Keith. I have a quick question for you. So, okay, so we've never gotten into this before, but so you're a half orc, right? Yeah. What's the other half? Oh, uh, you know, I always heard that it was half human. But I never okay. asked my parents about it, I guess. Okay, cool. Well, That's all I want to know. <laughs> so if you but, guys have uh, a baby, it's 75% human? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey, quarter work. We're saving the human race right here. But first, we got to go and do some other stuff. So <laughs> we got to find go. some half-elves, too, and bring them into the bloodline. <laughs> so uh, as you all are sort of finishing up, you see um, some one of the soldiers comes and says, um, sir, there are a, a few warriors who just come to the camp. They say that they are friends of this um, adventuring party. One of them says it's 
uh, someone named Wynn's father? <gasps> That's me. I mean, you know my name was Wynn. Let's go. Wait, we want to see them. Uh, aren't you disguised in... Oh, yeah, they know you're in... in yeah, but I've right. always That's been right. Win. They were like, they yeah. They just so didn't know I was like, in yeah, the changeling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you all um, go to meet your father, and um, you see... Da, 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 um, so Rokal and Orpheus are there, um, and they look kind of banged up, but they look okay. And riding on uh, Tony is Mithrica. <laughs> and um, with her is um, Vilo Bullhorn, uh, Mady's mom. Oh no, it's just my mom. And they're all like, we're so happy to see you. Things got really crazy back there. I hug them all and I'm like taking stock. Does anyone seem really hurt? I run up to my mom and I said, do you know anything about dad? She um, pauses for a moment and she takes your hands and she says, you're um, your father didn't make it, sweetie. <gasps> I'm sorry. There, there wasn't anything we could do. And Keeve comes over and he puts his arm around you. I'm sorry. And I, like, man. lean over and almost fall over. And he's just holding you. You all have this moment and um, everyone hugs and reconnects. Um, Arya, you don't see Elder Son with them. Um, what happened to Elder Son? Uh, you see Rokal is like, um, well, he split off to search the dungeons, but we weren't able to find him after that. Did you find Anne? No, we didn't see Anne either. Okay. Well, M maybe I'm so sorry. Is so we've so we're dealing with the disappear ants. Marty, it's not the time. Sorry. I hit Marty. <laughs> So uh, you um, you all have this moment, and then you return to your um, your um, barracks. Mithrica uh, comes over to you when um, with uh, Rokal, and she says, "I'm going to be going with you." No, I can't. I can't fight if I think you guys are constantly in danger. When she's a healer, your dad takes your mom's hand. And he's like. We'll be together and we'll find us a family. We're not going to make it without a healer. I know, but... They're powerful. And listen, we my dad gave his life for me so that I could have a better life. And if this world is over, then that's it. Do you want it to be in vain? No, of course not. Okay. Okay, but... Please stay safe and listen to us and, and let's work together and nobody be a hero. She smiles at you and she says, I'm so proud of you, Wynn. Thanks, Mom. I'm glad you're not divorcing my dad. What? <laughs> you and your your father and I were never getting divorced. Where, where is that coming from? And you, Rokal's like, she's been saying that all, all the past few days. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I whisper over to Arya, what, was, were Wynn's parents going to get divorced? No. Okay. Um, when your parents hug you, um, and um, does it fill her with inspiration? It does. Does it fill them with inspiration? Only your dad's hugs are filled. With inspiration. Okay. So I just want to make sure. Let's do some business. So we're getting ready to go to yes. the Castle Manor house. <laughs> yes. Castle Manor. House, um, yeah. All right. So we've properly distributed our melons, correct? Everyone has seven melons. All the four of us, at plus Keith. Mm -hmm. Seven okay. melons. I've always said that about myself. I've got seven melons. Everybody, everybody has their stuff. Marty, do you have your armor on? I do. Okay. Thank you for the armor, by the way. It's uh, I feel protected and loved. You bet. Aww. All right, I go over and check on Tony. Uh, Tony is looking uh, pretty good. And uh, mm -hmm. she's like really happy to see you. She nuzzles up to you. And, I uh, pet her. Wait, I put the ear on. Is she saying anything? Uh, she is saying, um, I'm so happy to see you. It's been so long. A lot of crazy stuff happened at the palace. There was this weird dragon man, and he had this barrel, but the barrel was talking. Uh -huh. And we, we had a barrel? Wait, what, ha what happened That's after that? Uh, you, you see uh, Tony looks at you, and is like, well... 
I mean... Does Tony understand common uh, as I'm saying it? So you feel like Tony understands everything that you all say, but you just can't understand Tony. But now that you have the ear, you can talk to Tony. Okay, um, good. So she says the, the weird dragon man carried the barrel into the castle. And um, there was a uh, tiefling that was with him. Um, and her skin was really pale. Okay. Okay, so the Tyrannicas have fee. It's what it sounds right. like. Tony, Which, uh, Tony's oh. like, I don't know what that means. AKA, we have a man on the inside. Uh, or is being sacrificed currently. Oh, right. It could be. Uh, hey, was, yeah. was Elder Son also in Aarakocra? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Tony, did you see another bird person like Arya at all? Uh, well, when the other when the other changeling person came by what uh the the sorry uh, when the lizard person came by um there was no uh, <laughs> see tony now see tony what you said first was changeling and that does um fill me with concern what? what Tony? You, I don't know. I just hey, look. I'm just a horse, all right. I don't know. Great, fantastic. About. I'll just put that away in my brain. <laughs> so Tony, when the totally real lizard person? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tony. Please continue. <laughs> so they they came by and they they were um they were being chased by some bird person who was flying above them. Okay, did they see the bird person when they know. had the barrel? I don't know, because I found this like really nice pile of hay. And it wasn't uh, like the normal kind of hay. It was like yes. a special kind of hay. It was kind of spicy. But like, if I had some water with it, like I eat some hay and then I drink some yeah. water. It so you cool lost focus. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like as I'm seeing this thing play out, I feel both left out of a conversation and like briefly, Tony knew more than she was initially let on. Can I, can I, can I, can I write? What would I roll to sort of uh, determine the truth of this matter? Uh, so you want to see if Tony's telling the truth? Is that what you want to do? Is our, I, is Tony knows Tony. more than she was saying. Okay, so go ahead and roll an insight check with disadvantage because you don't understand what Tony's saying. Well, I'm assuming uh, Wynn is repeating everything that Tony's saying. Are you saying translating? As, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so go ahead and roll an insight check with disadvantage because it's a game of telephone. <laughs> Okay, my first roll was 19, which would have been great, but then my next roll was a five. Oh. And you feel like Tony is um, probably just telling Wynn about the various types of hay and how different consistencies of hay can actually- I squint at the horse real hard. Um, Tony uh, kind of like looks at you and then hits you with her tail. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Can what I... other changelings do we know? Yeah, I just can we all just do a real quick changeling check where <laughs> we're all gonna I'm gonna ask my parents to tell me something that only I would know. Please ask your mother that. Um, who else is with us here? Uh, there are a lot of people. So there's there's uh, both of Wynn's parents. There's Everyone who just showed up on the mom. boat, I'm assuming, isn't a Jason. Uh There's also um, some people that y'all haven't met yet. There's Orpheus. There's Keith. Uh, um, my, yes, my friend. Yeah. Well, Keith okay. hasn't been out of our sight, right? No, yeah, he was. He's been, uh, really... Yeah, he was in the dungeon. He has oh, been yeah, out of our sight. Right. Yeah. Super. So let's all just do a quick changeling check by asking our lovers and friends um, sort of things only they would know. Oh my god, I'm trying to think of like what happened before Keith went down. Or we all went down before. Ha um. Ooh, so, yeah. do I we have ask... time to do a comprehensive changeling check? Just for a everyone? quick, just a quick do... one question. Can we just roll it and say we ask a question that only he would know from the time before? I'll tell you this this is what you can do. Each person can ask one person one question. So, you pick who you want to ask it to, and you pick what question you want to ask. What do you all think? Should I talk to my mom or Keith? Those are my two people I could talk to. Yeah, I have three people, which is the problem. 
I feel like you should talk to your mom because the rest of the party has had enough experience with Keef to potentially ask that question. Except Marty. Yeah. Okay. All right. You talk to your mom, and then who we have left are both of my parents and my friend Orpheus. This is an insight check. Uh. So. Uh, yes. Well, so I guess you could ask them first, and then depending on what they say, you, you could roll inside if you don't believe them or you want to see if they're telling the truth. I just want to say I asked my mom a question that she would only know the answer to, and what then she answers ask? me. What was the name of my favorite stuffed animal when I was a kid? Oh, you, come on, you know that. It was the pony. That's why we got Tony for you. Okay, mm-hmm. but see this. This is when we're role playing makes it really complicated. Go ahead and roll to inside. know. Okay, <laughs> should I roll again, or do I have the one I have? Whatever just rolled? you rolled before, what'd you get? Twelve. Okay, so you um, remember that when you were a kid, you had um, a stuffed uh, pony, and uh, you named it Tony. And then when okay. your parents Perfect. got you an actual horse okay. companion, my a- mom's legit, y'all. Okay. So we have my parents, Keith, Keith, and Orpheus. I'm gonna ask. Keith, I can ask Keith a question. Sure. Great, and then Marty maybe asks my dad because he spent some time with him. I'll ask your dad a question. And then my mom's been captured, so I guess talk to my mom instead of Orpheus. I don't know. Okay. So yeah, I guess the thing that makes sense. Who would like to go first? Uh, mm. I also, can I just, can we back up for a second? Like, mm-hmm. so when's a changeling, right? Hey! Did she tell if hey. other people are changelings? Uh, you did say that you have a spider sense to tell whoever, if people are changelings. Um, I'll say that whoever you go to ask a question to, you'll be able to tell whether or not they're a changeling. Got it, okay. Okay, cool. Fantastic. I feel very uncertain about talking to uh, Wynn's dad, uh, so I'll probably go last. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask my mom, I guess. Changeling, mom, changeling check. <laughs> uh, so yeah, go ahead and roll an insight check with advantage. All right. Okay, eighteen. Okay, what what are you gonna ask your mom? Uh, I am going to ask her if. She remembers the first bone I broke. Um, you see, she uh, smiles at you and she says, "Yeah, it was. It was the first time that you tried to change your form, and you wanted to be a bird so you could fly. Um, but you ended up falling out of the tree and you broke your arm. Because it doesn't work like that. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. And you see that uh, it, it, that is your your mom. She's telling the truth." Okay, um, my mom's good. Hey, <laughs> mom, can you check dad? <laughs> you see, she's like, sure, honey, uh, that's what you want. Um, Marty, I saved you. <laughs> she she goes to talk to your father. Um, does I just he... had a sigh of relief. Because <laughs> I was just going to ask him about their divorce. Because um, <laughs> no one seems to know. So, uh, <laughs> Is anybody else going to um, ask anyone anything? I want to ask Keith a question. Sure. Uh, Keith, back in Stone Snarry, while we were fighting I eavesdrop inside, because this is a piece of my history that I don't know about. Mm-hmm. When we were when we were fighting and we were finally fleeing with you from the Knife Museum, the party took one object from the Knife Museum. What was it? Uh, you see, he's like. Oh, man. Um, one object, besides the emotional turmoil of watching my parents die, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it was probably that weird spear thing that you found, right? Can I go ahead and insight check him? Right, but Keith did see us use that in the dungeon, so he could be guessing. Which is what's not ideal about that question. <laughs> okay, so that's it's a non-natural 20 on the inside check. Uh, you feel like 
because his eyes are watering up uh, thinking about his parents dying and because he probably wasn't being super uh, uh, attentive to other things that were happening, that's probably the only thing he remembers. Um, cool. But he's telling the truth. Great. I, I, I love, I love, I love making my my best friend's boyfriend uh, relive past trauma. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Marty, can you changeling check uh, my best friend Orpheus? You don't really know anything about her. Could you just do that real quick? <laughs> uh, I walk up to Orpheus and I say, so when's parents? Uh, three's out on don't them getting divorced, huh? ask if they're gonna get a... <laughs> so go ahead and roll an insight check. That is uh, 12. Awesome. So you see um, Orpheus looks at you and like, lifts up her eye patch uh, and is like, divorced? What? What are you talking about? What's underneath both... the eye patch? Yeah, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, so when she lifts up the eye patch, she has ghost eye. And she's like, um, cool. I, I've been with her parents for a while now. They've never mentioned that. And they seem pretty much in love to me. Um, you feel like she's telling the truth. Okay, and my mom's gonna change and check my dad. Yeah, so she went to talk to your dad. And what does she say? Uh, so, uh, you, your mom went to talk to your dad, um, and then uh, about ten minutes later, uh, she doesn't come back. I'm sorry, what? Yes, yeah, so she doesn't come back. Okay, cool. Uh, where did they go? <laughs> you can go check. Yeah, we waited ten minutes. Yeah, let's go check. We would never have given her ten minutes. Yeah. Okay, five minutes. She doesn't come back. Great. Okay, I'm gonna go find them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you go. I like. I'd like to prepare an action. If we see combat adjacent things happening, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go into a rage. Okay. Cool. I'm so angry because I was so. I was so excited to come back to win and tell her that her parents aren't gonna get divorced, and now they're gone. Maybe they're doing it. The divorce court. I <laughs> hope they're doing it. I, I hope, hope they're doing, they're doing, it, doing too. it Because the old, I would take the mental scarring over my father being a changeling, changeling any time. Uh, so you. Uh, now, how do your parents pass changeling check if they're definitely changeling? Well, the question is are they the changeling that they're trying to be? <laughs> you walk into um, the tent and you see. Uh, your dad um, and his eyes are glowing red oh, and uh, he's got your mom in the air nope. uh, by the throat and uh, he looks at you and uh, in a voice that you don't recognize says something in a language that, are you wearing the ear? Yes. He says something in a language that Arya, Mady, and Marty don't understand. When because of the ear you understand that this is um, some sort of demonic language, and um, I, I'm, I've got infernal language because I'm a teeth length. So uh, Marty and, and Wynn both understand uh, this, um, and your father says, um, "It took me a long time to find you all. Did you think that you were going to kill Tiberia and get away with it? Your father's soul is mine." No, I disagree. Hard disagree. And uh, uh, do you want do you want me to attack your dad, Win? I loudly say, "What did he say?" <laughs> uh, so who's, who's in the? Are you all inside of the tent? I I'm guess a, right behind Win. Yeah, and I'm de okay. I definitely was the first one in. Cool. Um, There's okay. no world in which I wasn't first one in. <laughs> Everybody, make a perception check. Boy. I am so glad we did the changeling check, y'all. Yeah. My passive perception is 17, but I just rolled a 15. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> it, that's enough. Uh, let's just say that. Um, I got so, a 17. Seven. Okay. 17. Okay. Nine. Nine. Okay. So, Mady and Wynn, um, you hear uh, a bunch of screaming from outside, um, and all of a sudden, it, you feel really hot. Like, you feel like there was a lot of heat for, for some reason. And uh, when your dad, your dad smiles at you and he's like, you can't stop us. We're certainly gonna try. Martin, get him. 
Uh, so, because this is combat adjacent, like he's she's choking the mom. Um, which yeah, I is mean, she I, breathing? She's 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 breathing. She's just okay. uh, restrained at the moment. Uh, I am in a rage, and I'm going to uh, roll to attack. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack. I'm gonna do my great axe, uh, and that is a plus to hit. Blah blah. blah. I think that is a thirteen. Uh, a 13 uh, hits. Oh, I gain, I gain advantage on strength checks as well, so... Uh, yeah, also, 13. Like, attacks not a, is not a strength check. The strength check gotcha. is like if you're trying to lift something, break something, grapple, something like that. Um, but you do hit, so go ahead and roll damage. Okay, so that is uh, 1d12 plus 3, and then I have an additional plus 2 with uh, rage. Uh... So that's an 11 plus three, which makes it 14 plus two, which makes it 15. Um, awesome. And because I'm in a rage thing, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. That's my that's my first action, uh, my first attack. That's a 15. Awesome. And what kind of weapon are you attacking with? Great axe. Okay, so you rush over and bring your axe down. Um, I want to target his hands. I want to chop up his hands so we can. Wait, wait, is that my dad dad being possessed? I think that's my dad being possessed. Then chop off his hand and he can't hurt your mom. Stop. Stop. You said to hit him. You told me to hit him. So, I uh, jump in between him. No, it's okay. So you um, you can't <laughs> you can't okay. uh, you can't chop <laughs> his hand off with fifteen damage. Uh, he's he's a little stronger than that. But so you with the uh, with your attack, you um, bring your axe down and you cut him pretty good. Uh, he lets um, uh, Mithrika go, and you see his eyes uh, turn back to normal um, as he screams out in pain, grabbing his hand and falling to his knees. Um, and he's like, what What happened? What's going Can on? Can I toss him a good melon? <laughs> sure. That's what they're go, called? Okay. Go ahead and, and mark uh, one good melon off from your cap. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you're going to get divorced. And then you were choking her. And then Wynn told me to hit you. I she thought you were going to hit you. restrain him or hit him like with your fists. <laughs> Mithrika walks over and wraps her hand, arms around your dad. And she's like, it's okay. You were... You were enthralled by some kind of power that we don't understand, but I'm here with I hide my great axe behind my back. Uh, so uh, as as they're talking, you hear um, coming from uh, outside the... Don't the give tent. me that shock, matey! Um, we all hit the wrong people in time! <laughs> my daddy! You hear... Um, it's not so much you, it's just the whole thing. <laughs> Fire outside. Yeah. I can't remember if we brought Keith with us. It's the whole thing, okay? <laughs> he's, he's there with you. Is he Keith there. and Kit and the skeleton. Arya, is your skeleton here? So Josh. Keith and Josh, Josh the, skeleton, the skeleton are there. Kit the kitten it, is not there. Uh, okay. Kit's, Tony Kit's, here. Um, Tony's outside. Tony, Tony's uh, outside where, where the horse stable is. Is Orpheus with Tony? Uh, Orpheus is with you all. Um, and so you hear this um, roar from outside um, and you hear more people saying like, stab it, shoot it. And uh, people are rushing by. Uh, your mom looks at you all and she's like, go help them. I'll take care of your father. Oh, mom, can we tie him up? I'm going to tie him up first. Dad, I love you. And I'm so sorry for this, but you're currently possessed. So until we can solve that problem. He's like, I understand. Uh, and so you tie up your dad, um, and your mom is like, I'm going to stay here with him, but you all find out what's going on. Okay. Um, and just FYI, uh, the safe word is now uh, pineapples, so <laughs> that's our security question. It's always pineapples. Make it coconuts. Okay, it's coconut. <laughs> Coconut. Coconuts. It's Double Duke. <laughs> that's not even his name. Double Duke. That's the important part. <laughs> so your mom's like, okay, I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> Starts to uh, heal your dad. Um, you all rush outside. You see this massive shadow dragon. Um, and it's 
blasting this dark black fire uh, out of its mouth. And there are soldiers being burned, other soldiers trying to stab it. Um, and you see um, Antigon uh, standing on top of um, a wagon, and he has both of his wands out, like blasting at it um, with magic. Um, and you see Zymes and um, and Faruna are there with their weapons uh, drawn near Antigon, and they're fighting off skeletons uh, protecting him. Oh, can I run over there and tell the skeletons to stop? Yeah. So, uh, so. There's a lot of craziness happening, so now we're going to be in combat. So we're going to act in turn order. And Arya, no. you are first in the turn order from the oh. initiative that we rolled. Um, so you want to go um, over to where uh, the skeletons are, right? That's right. Awesome. So you run over there uh, to try to control the skeletons. Um, so go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw. Constitution Ooh. save. Not 20. Oh, yeah. So, um, there are probably, like, 15 skeletons over here, and you, uh, like a puppet master, uh, hold out your hands, and all the skeletons stop, and they turn to you. Uh, yes! Waiting to hear your next command. With me! We, I, I point them at the attack the dragon. And they're like, Argh. And all the skeletons start to start to charge toward um, the dragon. Um, Does this include Josh? No. no I stop. Josh. I stop. Jake. 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 I thought it was Josh. Jake. Josh. Josh. Jake. It's clearly Jake. James. Jeremy. Jake skeleton. Jer- it's Jeremy. You stop Jeremy from joining the rest of them. Yes. So your your right hand skeleton stays by your side, and the other skeletons <laughs> head off to attack uh, the dragon. Um, and now we're gonna go to Orpheus. So Orpheus sees what's happening, and uh, she um, what's Orpheus going to do? she goes over and she um, jumps into uh, one of the wagons that um, is like this really large wagon, and she starts to fiddle around with something. And you see, she pulls the um, the sheet off of the top of the wagon, and there is a giant um, crossbow in it. And yes, finally a ranged weapon. She's um, <laughs> it's, it's like a it's like a huge like a like a basilisk like infiltration crossbow thing. Yes. And she looks at you and she's like, "What are you standing around for? Help me!" Um, <laughs> and so she's trying to to load it. Um, and now we're gonna go to win. It's your turn. Uh, I guess I'm gonna help Orpheus load a giant crossbow. Do I feel like it's gonna do more damage with a big crossbow than with my short bow? So, <laughs> so this crossbow is like the size of a car. Like it's it's a massive. Yeah. Crossbow. yeah. Then I'm going to help um, Orpheus load and fire it. Okay. Is there a way I can also help with that as yes. a big beefy boy who's uh, enraged? Yes. <laughs> so uh, on 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 each of your turns, you can attempt to help. So how the crossbow works is. You need to load it, you need to draw the crossbow string, and then you can fire it. So to load it, you need to roll a 15 or higher. To draw it back, you need to roll a 15 or higher. To fire it, you need to hit the dragon's armor class to hit. Okay. So right now, the, the crossbow needs to be loaded. Can yes. this be, like, additive? No. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're I'll... five, and you're two, and our six, and... That seven over there combined. <laughs> we are the captain of a place. <laughs> the, okay. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'll help load it. I'm not particularly strong, though, so. Just, just see what happens. Go ahead and roll that down. Is it strength or just a straight d20? Uh, it's going to be a straight d20. Oh, that's better for me, technically. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um... That was a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Uh, <laughs> when Load it <laughs> and draw it back. You've been having a rough time, and there are a lot of people here on this island that you thought was your home that just keep messing with you and your family. Yeah, I don't and like it. You are just like tired Marty, of everyone's talking to you. stuff. 
you jump up there, you like take the bolt from Orpheus, load it in, draw it back, and you shoot a shot. Um, and you hit uh, the dragon right underneath uh, its front leg. So go ahead and roll um, 66. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Makes a satisfying sound. That's 20 damage. Awesome. Hey! So you, um, you shoot the dragon in this dark blood shoots out of it as it rears back in pain. Um, and now we're going to go to um, Marty. It is your turn. Uh, I'm gonna I just saw this incredible thing that Wynn did. I'm gonna jump and try to do the same thing with the crossbow. I want to help. <laughs> awesome. Go ahead and roll in that 20. Or a, 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 a yeah, 20. could you roll in that 20? Just roll in that 20, yeah. <laughs> if you could, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah, so, uh, can I use using my Barbarian Rage and also an absurdly high athletics thing, can I use athletics to try to, uh, at least to um, load and draw in one thing? <laughs> trying to get a running start. Yeah, so if you, um, if you roll a DC 19 or higher, I'll let you load in and draw it. Uh, so, is this otherwise a straight strength? Is this a strength roll? Can I use my athletics for this? What, what would this be? Uh, so I'm letting you use athletics on this one. Normally, it's just a flat D20. Okay, this is a that's a 16 with my athletics. Awesome. So you you get into uh, the cart and you're able to load it. Uh, you aren't able to draw it back uh, though. It seems okay. like after it shot the first one, uh, the strings got a little tight for a moment. So I've got bonus actions. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for so for a bonus action, would I be able to try to draw it back, or is there a way I can try to help a friend by like throwing a javelin? I've got javelins in my inventory. Um, uh, so you won't be able to attempt to manipulate the um, crossbow again uh, this turn. However, you can use your bonus action to do other stuff if you'd like. Um, so. Um, Usually you can't make an additional attack as a bonus action, um, but if you have like some kind of special ability or there's something special about your class that allows you to do that, then you can do that. So I have two attacks per action flat. Does the uh, manipulating the crossbow do both of them? Yes. So so okay. The, so the as... attacks. So when you think about action, think about like an action as an umbrella thing. And so if you chose to to attack. And you have two attacks, but you chose to interact with this special object, so that was your gotcha. action for the turn. So I'm because I'm in a rage and I'm frenzied, I can make a single melee weapon attack as a bonus action on each of my turns. Awesome. So, so who would you like to attack? So there are um, there's a dragon. Uh, there are the skeletons that Arya sent to uh, attack the dragon, and there are some other skeletons around the camp uh, that Arya has not. Um, to take a command of here. Uh, do I have enough time to shout out a, a very quick, like, hey, folks, tell me what to do real quick thing? Yeah. yeah. Who is riding the dragon? Is this the succubus or is this? No, the dragon's there on its own. Okay, great. Hey, so do you want me to hit the dragon or should I stay by the crossbow? Maybe the dragon. dragon. Yeah. Dragon. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I take my great axe and I go like, <laughs> after loading the crossbow mm -hmm. and I try to just to, to, to hit it. Is the dragon through dragons on the ground? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the dragon is currently standing on the ground, um, okay. and so you run over uh, and uh, go ahead and roll an attack uh, to see if you can hit it. Uh, that is a seventeen. Uh, 17 does not hit. Um, Shoot! So you uh, swing at the dragon, but the scales are really tough, so you're unable to break the skin. Um, so now... And I'm just looking up at it, just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be... Um, um, uh, he's tied up. Uh, oh, I don't have your mom in the initiative order. She's doing something else. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. It's Mady's turn now. Oh, man. All right. Mady. 
I mean, I guess I'm gonna try hand-to-hand -hand combat with the dragon. <laughs> oh, go for it, yeah. All right, so I get up my hammer, my trusty hammer. All right, so that was a 19, which is a crit for me. Awesome. Hey. Go ahead and roll double damage. Okay, so let me see what that is. Ah, let's see, so I've got my war hammer. Why, why can't I tell the difference between my die? Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. 17, which doesn't hit. Uh, so, hold on. I thought no, you, I thought you were, I thought I thought you were, you were rolled to hit. Yeah, you were rolled oh, to hit. Oh, I already rolled to hit. Yeah. 17 is what I got. Yeah, so you're rolling damage now. So 17 damage. Uh, so, uh, matey. You uh, take your weapon and you found out about your dad passing away and now these people are messing with your friends. The dragon uh, is um, fighting some uh, um, Zondarian soldiers and you run up and like jump off of its uh, claw and just hit it right across the face. Uh, and it falls over to one side uh, from you hitting it. Uh, and now we're gonna go to. Oh yeah, baby! You see, Keith is like, I think I'm in love, and uh, we're gonna yeah, go to. <laughs> That's That's not his, his turn now, so he's going to try to help you with the. Oh yep. So he um, is able to draw back the string on of course the he giant is. crossbow. Um, and Tell us about the flexing of his muscles as he does them. So as as he's getting in there, he sees you glistening uh, uh, as you're trying to pull it back. And he comes over and he's like, I got you, don't worry. And the two of you together, just two baby boys, are able to pull back uh, the, the string and, and ready another shot. So now it's going to be Antigon's turn. And he is going to do some powerful magic. Um, he Wait, is going he's to dual wielding wands. <laughs> yeah, it's a wizard gunslinger. He is. Uh, so he um, takes his wands and puts them together into one wand and blasts out this <gasps> massive wave of energy um, at the dragon, and it uh, eats it. Um, and it seems like it has no effect. What? And you see, he looks like shocked that that just happened. He just um, fails. <laughs> yeah. So now it's going to be the skeletons' turns. So um, the skeletons wow. that you commanded are like climbing on the dragon and like stabbing it. Um, uh, and there are other skeletons that are around. So I'm going to roll three d20s. That's going to determine <laughs> how many. Um, Actually, no, I won't make them d20s. Let's roll some d8s. This will determine how many soldiers are killed by the skeletons in this turn. Oh, so, cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, but the skeletons we don't control. That's right. That's correct. Um, so, outside of this one climactic area, a whole bunch of people are, are, are being hurt. It's weird. They're all ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, oh, wow. uh, so I don't like that. As you I don't all like it when you say that. Are trying it. to fight this dragon, you see all around you that Zandarian soldiers are just being mowed down by these skeletons, and th thirty soldiers are killed uh, by these skeletons. Oh, Arya, right, get more of the skeletons. Yeah, okay, I'm working on it. <laughs> and um, you see, now it's the dragon's turn. So the dragon, uh, it stands up because it was knocked oh, down. And, I forgot to take my second hit. Damn. Uh, the dragon's eyes glow red. And uh, when and Martin, you hear that voice again through the dragon. And it says, your friends will be mine. And the dragon like lifts his claws in the air. And the 30 soldiers all get up. Uh, oh, and they, oh, um, no. Some of them Aria. have like rotting flesh, hey, and they're uh, like dragging their weapons around. Oh, um, yeah. and they join the fight. Um, and then the dragon is going to make a breath weapon attack at the folks in the cart. I don't 
So, this is what's gonna happen. Um, actually, no, it's not because it, it ate that energy blast that Antigod um, blasted it. So, let's see what happens. To him. I'm gonna roll two d20s, and um, let's see. Arya, you're over by where Antigon is. Um, high or low? Oh boy, low. Okay, cool. Let's see what happens. Awesome. So, um, the dragon uh, lets out this blast of dark energy that's also got the spiral around it of the power that Antigon shot at it. It comes right oh. for the cart where Antigon is standing on, and you see um, that uh, someone steps out of the cart, and she has this... Um, giant machine that you aren't really sure what it is. It looks like the same kind of power source that Michael 1 and Michael 2 have in them, and the machine uh, blocks the blast and like a barrier comes up around the cart. Uh, oh. And the woman uh, who stepped out of the cart, uh, she's um, in, in uh, Asimir, uh, Asimar, uh, so it's like an angelic being. She has emulsive eyes um, and tan skin with uh, an elegant black coat and uh, that has long tails, she's wearing red pants. She has uh, gray and black hair that's tied into a, a, a braid that hangs over her shoulder. And the most stylish woman. She's like, uh, Fatima Gray, nice to meet you. Uh, and she kind of tips her invisible hat to you, Arya. Uh, We've heard of her. We've heard of her. Uh, so, yes. She's have famous. We? Have we? <laughs> she's your, famous. In your mind's eye, you know that Fatima Gray is the... Um, Inventor Tycoon who runs Hell for Leather, which is like the <gasps> yes, large corporation. you're so yes, right. yes. Yeah. I'm a fan of Fatima <laughs> Gray's. Uh, she she seems familiar, but the, the memories are tied up with Michael One and Michael Two in my mind, but I don't know why. It's on page one of my notes. <laughs> Smiling just re recalled that so fast. Like a boss. Of, uh, Michael One and Michael Two. Especially if they received upgrades, are they still like non-combat? Are they just still uh, DM plot devices? I'll tell you what, <laughs> so right now you can see um, through the smoke, uh, Marty, you see two familiar faces that are a part of the machine that she's using and you see Michael 1 and Michael 2. Uh, and she's melded them into this shield that she's using. Um, so uh, to answer your question, it's probably gift. the second thing. Um, so, Listen, she's cool. She can do whatever she wants. Uh, we're going to go back to the top of the round. It's Arya's turn now. Okay. Um, so, like, those... So, like, those 30... <laughs> those 30 soldiers that were just killed and then, like, stood back up. Are they, like, all in a group? That's... So they're, like... So you're in a... Um, a camp and the camp is about 60 feet by 60 feet so they're right, all okay. over um okay you can make an investigation check to see if there's some way you can maybe like you know reach them all yeah okay yeah sure let's, let's give that a shot i could throw you really high into the air with <laughs> giant muscles and you could go up swings i do have oh wings. yeah that would be can oh. I just, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Can I just, like, fly up, you know, 15, <laughs> 15 or 20 feet into the air? Oh, boy, this is this trick is not going to keep working. And uh, <laughs> make some orders to all the skeletons that are in your shot. Okay, so you want to fly 20 feet into the air, and you want to take command of skeletons that are in, in your shot while you're 20 feet in the air. Okay, 15 feet. Okay, so... Spread like if you if you look at it through, we're gonna have to use a little bit of trigonometry. But if you look at the volume that is covered mm. by the uh, the escalation of the height of this triangle that we're making, this cone, then Arya should be able to reach by going at least because it's height times width. Yeah, do the math. It's, it's like, like that gift for like the lady to like. If, and all the math is on the screen. <laughs> if she go high, it go wide. So I'll tell you what. Um, we're going to ignore the battle that's happening, the giant dragon that's breathing fire, the giant bl ballista, all that stuff. We're going to ignore that, and I'll yeah. say, if you roll a 19 or a 20, then uh, I'll let you do what you want to do. Okay, I'll let this be a free action. Okay. Let's see how it goes. 
four. Awesome. So you feel like it's too loud and they won't be able to hear you. You can make an investigation check to see if there's a way you can amplify your voice. Okay. Let's, let's give that a shot. Wait, doesn't Martin have a voice amplification power? I do. Well, the wizard did. Do you still do? I, I, it's a cantrip. Can you, can you cast it on her? Can, can barbarians use cantrips? Yep, because because I'm a tiefling, baby! <laughs> uh, well, sure. Uh, so, uh, you know that Martin has the booming voice or whatever, a cantrip. Um, but go ahead and roll an investigation check. Okay. Nine. Yeah, you know Martin has that ability. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's also okay. Martin's voice, though, isn't it? It's not Arya's? I don't know. Mm, I'm pretty sure. It says, it says your voice booms up to three times as loud. One thing I would mention is that a cantrip is still a spell, technically, right? Mm. Right. This is what I'm thinking. Because I'm a, when I'm in a rage, I can't cast or concentrate on spells. No. Yes. So rest okay. Of <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'll say that, like, you were unsuccessful in your investigation, but... Uh, is there something else you would like to do for your turn? Um. I mean, unless unless I'm allowed to just take attacks now, which I would be totally okay with not being allowed to do. No, yeah, you can if you want. All that stuff. Shoot. I get a lot of what you do those for free actions. Shoot, I'm gonna go hit the dragon then. Cool. Go get that Sweet dragon. Down. What if you ordered the the skeletons to tell the other skeletons? First. So, telephone persuasion between skeletons, like, hey, I can, let them know I what a good deal this is. Right now, just because of uh, logic, that's not good. And for, right. for the sake of time, we don't want to go through it, so. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just had to, you know. I'm going to go whack the dragon with my quarterstaff. That is a 12. Cool. A 12 is not here. Uh, so you uh, swoop down and take a, hit, a pass at the dragon, but your skin is really tough, so you aren't able to hurt it with your first time. We should, uh, we should say some mean things about its childhood and try to reduce the toughness of its skin. <laughs> it's not pretty wise, unfortunately. <laughs> so I can take an unarmed strike as a bonus action? Uh, I'm pretty sure monks can do that, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You have to spend a key point, I think. So, look, I'm trying to search. No, you don't? This. Okay, yeah, you can just I have to spend a key point if I want to make two attacks, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and try to use that bonus attempt, uh, the bonus action, to make another. Oh, and I get two attacks, too. So this is just my second attack. Dear God. All right. Okay. We're up to speed now. <laughs> Thank you for all your patience. That one is a 17. Awesome. Is this with um, your quarter staff? That's right. Okay, you're unsuccessful. It does not hit. Okay. Then I'll try an unarmed strike. <laughs> cool. Your unarmed strike is the light of the feather fist, though, right? If it hits. <laughs> uh, and that's also a 17. Awesome. Uh, so you... Inclu including your bonus? Yeah. You feel uh -huh. like um, you try to gather some power... Uh, but you feel like you haven't charged it enough yet for it to be enough damage and so try to break through its scales, but it's too tough for you. This is very embarrassing, uh, guys. So, uh, very strong dragon. Orpheus is going to... Uh, uh, nope, so she's unsuccessful in trying to fire uh, the uh, crossbow. Uh, so now it's going to be Wind's turn. Yeah, girl, I'm going to fire this crossbow. Do it. Uh, what did I have to get? Because that's a 13. Uh, so you needed a 15. 15, okay. Um, so you are also unsuccessful. You're, it, you feel like because it's being used, it's harder to do. Um, so now we're going to go to uh, Marty. It's your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm next to the dragon who is doing some business now that's stood up again. I am... Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna go full barbarian because there are other people to load the crossbow and take care of that. I'm going to try to uh, 
I've got I've got basically three full attacks, so I'm just gonna go with three full attacks. Uh, sixteen. Uh, a sixteen does not hit. Does a twenty-four hit? Yes, that definitely hits. Okay, that's one d twelve plus three, and then an additional. Uh... Oh, that's a natural twelve. Plus three, that's fifteen. Plus two, that's seventeen. You're such a troll. <laughs> so seventeen total. Yep. Uh, is this damage? Yes. Okay, and then you had a third attack, right? Yeah. That's th- that is a. Does a twenty-five hit? Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> twenty-five hits. <laughs> so much. Uh, that is a. Ah, uh, that one is just a five, a seven. Just- Oh, just a seven. Okay, awesome. So, uh, I just feel like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> love barbarian Marty. Are, um, You're for it. Your bloodlust has taken over, and you are doing some serious damage to this dragon. Um, as you're attacking it, you see that this shadowy blood mist starts to spill out of it, um, and it's looking pretty hurt. Um, so now it is going to. Be- I want to do something very stupid. Can I do something very stupid as my turn ends? But what if you didn't? <laughs> what would you like to do? As the voice of, but what if you didn't rings in my head? I consider <laughs> the consequences of like, as that blood is spilling out, I'm just going like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> so Mar- uh, Marty is bathing. I'm in considering the- it. Oh, okay. I mean, you're, well, you're welcome to do whatever you like. So. Mm. Mm. You're eating the blood of the possessed shadow dragon. Maybe that would be a good idea. I'm keeping my mouth closed, but I'm certainly thinking about next turn, I'm probably going to open my mouth. Just going to be honest, because I am really angry right now, and barbarians scream. I just hit the scream. If we have to fight Mega Marty, I'm going to be so (laughs) pissed. I'm going to be so angry. We brought you back for this. (laughs) So now it's my turn. Right now, I'm doing good. (laughs) Oh, it's my turn? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I forgot to take my second Um, attack last time. It will not happen again. All right. Um, Nine. Nine is unsuccessful. Do not hear. Yeah. One second. Now, what if it was a 19? That would be a lot better. Uh, what if it, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, what if we just wanted it to be a 19? You know, I think in our, in our hearts we all want it. I rolled uh, an, another 9. Uh, oh, buddy. I rolled two 12s in her last turn. So, I mean, I rolled a 2, but I get a plus 7, so... Oh, wow. Um, you're trying to hit the dragon, uh, but it's spinning you off with its tail, and so you're, you're trying to break through, but you're unable to break through with the model. Uh, um, like that? So Keith is going to try to fire the crossbow, and he's Keith. unsuccessful. Oh, uh, Keith! Keith! Uh, <laughs> 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 like, y- y'all are like... <laughs> Oh, so no, we way. always love him. Just we're, we're he's too he's too pretty to be angry with. But we can de- definitely just be like, Keith, why? I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> See, um, Antigon uh, is going to. Is Fatima because she's now emerged? Is she now a, a, a character in, with initiative who can do things using my two, my friends? She that is. she has melded into a cannon. <laughs> she has initiative, she has agency, she has amazing hair, a red pants. I am she here does. for her. <laughs> she has, she hey, are you, uh, you got listen. eyes for someone other than Keith? If something happens to Keith, I got a backup now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know Carmen's gonna make something happen to Keith now. Um, He's been trying for like seven episodes, okay? So... <laughs> That is not true. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh. Um, so, um, Antigon is going to um, cast Fireball, and uh, good. Yeah. Oh. Oh well. Oh well. No, it's a Shadow Dragon. Okay. So yeah. So he's going to cast Fireball. And. Mm. Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah! It's a Shadow Dragon. <laughs> I'm going to need some more dice. 
like <laughs> <laughs> the kombucha meme. Eight D six of damage. Oh no, he's eight. gonna cast it at a higher level actually, so he's gonna be nine D six. Get in there. Nine D six. Man. Oh, uh, I didn't know very well. Uh, okay. Come on, owl feather. Get it together. That had kind of a nice ring to it. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get your head in the game. <laughs> So he does 34 points of damage um, yeah, he did. as he um, lets off this giant fireball and he's like, you'll pay for killing my men. Uh, and... You kill a lot of your men. Yeah, gotta be honest, that is the best cash raise I've heard some shot in battle. Yeah, he needs to step it up. Uh, so he... Uh, yeah, the dragon is looking masked up. Um, so as he does that, um, a big chunk of the dragon's face gets blasted, and Eric. you see this, like, really shadowy skeleton underneath the dragon on one half of its face, and that side has the red eye, and then on this side is the normal eye of the dragon, and uh, it rears up. It looks like it's preparing for some kind of attack. Um, now it's going to be the skeleton's turn. So, last time, 30 soldiers died. What about my Here's skeletons? The thing. Your, my our skeletons? Our skeletons never did damage to the, the skeleton thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. they did because they did roll <laughs> last time. Let's that roll is, oh, okay. over again. And see oh, okay, got it. Uh, oh, they, they rolled too low. They all missed. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. they're, they're on the dragon. God. was not able to pin it. They take up to their mom. So. Listen. Uh, Listen here. Uh, only, only eight soldiers died that time. So, oh, um, only eight. The skeletons kill eight more. Why don't you tell us their names and also the names of the children they'll be leaving behind? Yeah, did they have uh, a family? Were they uh, I'm sure they all did. So they're all dead, and then um, they um, <laughs> are risen to join the army of the dead. Um, and as that happens, you see um, uh, Fatima is like, this is not good. Um, she is. looks yes, at eh? you, Arya, and she says, Hey, can you control the skeletons? I think I have a plan. Um, My voice is too quiet. <laughs> she, uh, she's like, what? And then she takes out um, <laughs> this device, <laughs> and she presses a button, and it turns into like this megaphone thing. And she ah. says, I wanted to know if you could control the skeletons, but I can't hear what you're saying. I hope you come back down here. <laughs> and it's like super loud. Like everybody at the camp could probably hear it. And the dragon's like, mm, I wonder if she's controlling the skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> so the dragon is going to, it's now the dragon's turn, is going oh. to attempt to, um, so it's going to fly over. And so now it's in the air. It's going to attempt to bite. Wait. I'm sorry. Was that Fatima's turn? Was yeah, that was talk? her turn. Uh, well, was no, she talk. she built a device. Um, oh, got it. So yeah, got so it. she okay. put a, she yep. put a device into play. She had one prepared. Okay. Um, Come on. So, uh, <laughs> she's at least player. have her try. Can she roll to throw it to Arya? Please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, we'll sure. She is. So now, <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, the dragon's going to take flight. So anybody who's standing by the dragon. It's an opportunity attack as it takes off. Yes. Skeletons? Uh, uh they're all uh, so they're not uh, leaving us. 20! Stuff. You got a nat 20? I did! <laughs> Alright. So go ahead and uh, roll double damage. Okay. I got an unnatural 20. Hey! Go ahead and roll double damage. Am I also near the dragon? Uh, I tried to hit it. Yeah, you're, 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 you're in the air. She's in. Arya is already in the air, so the dragon's gonna fly right past her. That's an opportunity attack. I mean, right, you are, you were in its vicinity and it's taking off, so you can go ahead and roll an attack. Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. Awesome. Nine. Perfect. Not twenty. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll double damage. Okay. Um, you gave me three d tens for that. That was a choice you made. Three d ten. 3d10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then roll 6d10 since it's a crit. Oh, or you could click on, D if you trust D&D &D Beyond, you can queue up 6d10s. I don't have a d10 roll on D&D &D Beyond. Bottom left, you should see like a, a die, a shape. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, sick. You guys are rock stars. 3d10. 
you just click as many as you want. Okay. <laughs> the 17. 17. 17 total? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so... That's cool, oh, I didn't wow. know that. Dragon, um, dead, dead dragon. So... <laughs> Um, maybe. Uh, the dragon, um, tries to take off, and you, um, jump up and cut one of his wings, um, and as you do, um, Martin, you're able to, uh, stab upward and hit it in the gut, and its, um, chest, uh, tears open a little bit, and as it flies up towards you, Arya, you see that shadow eye is looking at you. And it says something in Infernal that you don't understand, but your fist shines true <laughs> on the Feather Fist. And with um, the power of your master and all the other monks of the Order of the Feather Fist, you punch right through the dragon's skull, and it bursts into light. And yes! as it does so, um, there are light particles that fall down onto the battlefield, and all of the army of the dead um, collapse into dust. Yes! Yeah! Can I remember what it said in Infernal? Uh, yeah. So you you can um, you can try to um, um, relay that information to one of your teammates if you would like. Cool. Hey, hey, Marty. What does mean? <laughs> so that's how infernal sounds, right? <laughs> um, so it's more. <laughs> so, um, um, Arya's pronunciation is a little off, but you know that what she is trying to say is um, uh, soon the ritual will be complete. And death will reign, is what she said. So I'm like, here's what you're actually trying to say. And mansplain the infernal back to her, unfortunately, because I've been placed in that position. And then then I helpfully asked, do they mean like rain, like as a ruler, or rain, like like, um, like weather? (laughs) I'm not sure it matters in either way. (laughs) I mean, I would just like to know. The army of the dead will reign. Would that just be a bunch of bones falling from the sky? You see, Keith uh, walks over and he's like, I-, I don't think either of those is a good thing. Um, <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, Antigon, hey, by the way, Keith, nice job out there. You see, he's like, <laughs> you too. He, he, failed, was, he failed. He failed. Didn't he fail all this film? He was no, like, he didn't. That was he so succeeded awesome. In one or, I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to not appreciate it. Hush, hush. I'm having a moment. Um, so, <laughs> Keith. Uh, takes uh, his your hand and puts one arm around your waist as the fire rages in the background and um, there's the smoke in the air and he looks you in the eye and he says, maybe I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I think that I love you. I love you too. And you, you both share a passionate kiss amongst the destruction of um, the battlefield. Antigon... Um, all of my skeletons clap. <laughs> the skeletons that are left are all clapping. Um, and uh, love is, has overcome death in this battle. But you see that it was not without loss. Um, Antigon is there looking over the battlefield, seeing all the men that he's lost. And, um, there are about 15... Uh, Zondarian soldiers left. Um, wait, wait. He came with 38 plus 15? That was his entire army? <laughs> you see, uh, do you say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but... You see, he's like, well, Zandara is, uh, needs to be protected. We, we couldn't take our entire force here, and we were hoping that we could rally the people of Broken Rock and join forces with them. 
but it seems that had insult to injury. So you said I need a total of fifty-three soldiers entirely. <laughs> you see, uh, I'm just gonna raise up a little army of my own. I'm just gonna walk in there, be like, "Hey, bro," and everyone's just gonna follow me, and then I'll have that army. Listen, mistakes were made. We need to move on. Ansagon <laughs> gets in your face when he's like, "You insolent child! My men died Ooh. here for the likes of you. Don't you yeah, dare insult me!" That's yeah, not, like, hold and up. we took the dragon down. Let's like, not fight. Let's not fight. Arya punched him with light. Let's not fight, everybody. Fight. But we need to keep going. We can't stay here. We need to go get information and continue with the plan. Um, not your 15 soldiers are behind us. <laughs> he uh, he angrily puffs now a little Arya's fire out of his soldiers. nose. And Aww. he's like... Oh. I have as many soldiers. He's like, well... <laughs> My soldiers and I will handle what we came here to do. It seems that we'd be best served if we split our efforts. Since you and your friends are so powerful, why don't you go to the <laughs> palace and my men and I will take care of Churlish. Fine. Since the ritual is almost complete and that's probably where it's going down. I think that makes sense for us. You uh, see he turns to leave and uh, oh, what would you say, Marty? <laughs> I was going to say, excuse me, mega famous uh, tycoon Fatima, uh, we could use some help. And you did take my best friends and meld them into an own unholy weapon. So uh, would you mind joining us for uh, destroying an ancient ritual and saving the world? You see, as, as you were talking to her, she's like doing something on a device. And she's like, oh, sorry about that. And she goes over to the shield generator and presses a few buttons. They separate and turn back into Michael 1 and Michael 2. Oh, um, wow. And she's like, uh, I think that my office would be best served with uh, um, Commander Owlfeather. But uh, Michael 1 and Michael 2 will escort you to assist if needed. Right, can I get, I, 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 excuse me, excuse me. Uh, uh, I like uh, the uh, megaphone. Hi, big fan here. Big fan here. Like, oh, whoa, oh. Big fan. Wait, no, but I actually need the megaphone. Can I please have the megaphone? It helps me control the army of the dead. Um, she pulls a, a small, like, disc out, and she hands it to you. She says, uh, press the center button, and it'll turn into a voice amplifier. And I want to roll persuasion. Thank you so much, you're amazing. I want to roll persuasion with puppy dog eyes. <laughs> Go for it. That's a 15. Uh, she looks at you and she says, um, well, you know, I'm more of a cat person myself. But actually, I, no, really, actually, that's actually a 17. All right. She looks at you and she says, I'm really more of a cat person myself, but I really want to be able to help. So maybe if there's something I can give you to help you out, is there something that you think you need? I mean, you seem pretty well equipped. You all handled that dragon. Can I make a, on the side, can I make a call for Kit? Is Kit around? Uh, yeah. So you call for Kit and you hear like a meow, like a really faint meow. Um, Do a changeling check. <laughs> coming from your tent. Um, so your tent has collapsed and there's some rubble over, rubble over there. So you feel like maybe kids buried under the rubble. Wait, we have a tent? Or the tent where my parents were? The word, wherever Mady's barracks were, <laughs> kids under the rubble <laughs> where Mady's barracks are. I, what would be the most useful item for the party at this point? I mean, um, do you have like a, a gun? <laughs> <laughs> she, she laughs at you and she's like, don't you? And she pulls one out. <laughs> gun, please. Yeah, can I just have a gun? Thank you. So yeah, she pulls out a, a gun and she's like, oh, a gun? I never thought of that word. I was thinking more like combustion projectile, but Gun sounds better. It's a lot easier. It rolls off the tongue. You can have the name rights if you give Win the, the physical object, the prototype that you have. Yeah, or equip them onto Martin 1 and Martin 2. Michael 1 and Michael 2. Yes! Give Michael 1 and Michael 2 guns! Give them guns! Mold it to their flesh! Uh, she looks at it and she says, oh, sure, I mean, it'll take about two weeks, but I could definitely do that. Okay, nope, I'll just oh, yeah. take it then, I guess. <laughs> she hands you the gun. Uh, so the gun has... Uh, Thank you! We'll look up stats for the gun later. 
<laughs> She's an inventor. What did you think would happen? All of you fools don't even know who she is. You won't let me talk to her. Please. Uh, Miss Gray, um, maybe here is a huge fan of your work. Well, best be on our way. Thanks so much. <laughs> we aren't going to forget the kitten under rubble. I know. So here's the thing. The entire time we're talking about this, I don't want to forget the kitten under rubble. Can I go off having negotiated that deal? Can I run off and help the kitten under rubble, which I heard meow? Yes, you do. Please. So you uh, scoop up Kit and um, Kit's a little dirty, but uh, she's okay. And... Okay. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, so now you have the small kitten in your arms. You bring her back to Fatima, who's more of a cat person. <laughs> I bring her back to Fatima, of course. We aren't going to do the changing check yet. I hope that doesn't have consequences. <laughs> so you uh, bring the kitten back, and Fatima is like talking to Mady, and she's like telling you about uh, Hell for Leather. And she's like, Yeah, when I was 18, I wanted to be. Oh my god, is that a cat? And she runs uh, over uh, uh, and. That's my cat. This is your cat? Oh, he's so cute. And she's like playing with uh, Kit. Um, if Kit transforms into something horrible, I'm never going to forgive you, Carmen. <laughs> and so Fatima's playing with Kit. Uh, you see Antigon and his men uh, head out, and they start to head toward um, uh, Churlish's house. And um, when your mother and father um, uh, say that they're going to head, uh, your mother and father walk up to you, and they're like, we're going to head with um, uh, uh, Antigon, because... Once we attack Churlish, the people of Broken Rock will need a leader. And you see Rokal puts his arm around your mom and he's like, and they'll have the best one. Why is he untied? Dad, you're being possessed by a demon lord. I, you can't go do this. He's like, I feel fine now. I, I think that whatever was wrong with me before. Tie your dad back up. Oh, no, tie okay. your dad back up. Just take the rope tie and tie him back up. up. <laughs> Sorry, awesome. Dad. So as he's saying that he's okay, you're tying it back up, and he's like, well, I, I really think this isn't necessary. And so you tie him Mom, back up. Mom, why did you untie him? You saw him get possessed. He was choking you. Dad, you have to stay here. You can stay on our ship, but you're not going anywhere. Uh, you see your mom walks over to your dad and she puts her hand on his face and she's like, it's okay, I'll be, I'll be okay. And your mom and dad kiss uh, and they have a moment. And then your, <laughs> your mom, uh, she looks at you and she kisses you on the forehead and she says, be careful, I'll see you soon. Is Orpheus going with you or with us, Orphe? Uh, or if he's like, I can speak for myself. Uh, Sorry, I, that's, I said it because I was thinking it, and then I said Orphe to ask you. So yes, it is your choice. You see, she's <laughs> hooking up the cart with the giant uh, crossbow on it to um, a like a, a pulley thing that um, Tony is going to be pulling. And she's like, I'm coming with you. I'm going to kill me a death god. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, the spirit. So um, your mom uh, heads off after Antigone. Bye, I love you, Mom. Please be careful. So I talked to Fatima and said, okay, so we've talked for a bit. We've got this great cat. We're really, like, really, really big fans of yours. They don't appreciate you, those people who are leaving. I really think you should come with us. You see Fatima's petting the cat, and she's like, well, I mean, appreciates is not really something that I seek, but... Uh, I see that you drive a hard bargain, so I'll tell you what. If you let me hold on to this cat, <laughs> I'll come with you. I was, yes, but also I was kind of hoping that she would watch my mom because I don't really trust uh, Antigon. You see, Mady's uh, mom uh, walks over and she's like, I'll keep your mother safe, when." Okay, mom squad. Um, yes. And your mom comes over to you, Mady, and she's like, I'm so sorry about what happened to your father, and I wish I was more of a fighter so I could help. But please be careful. Mom, you are a fighter. I want you to be careful. She gives you a hug. And she's like, my little matey, going off to be a hero of the world. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, and by the way, this is Keith. He's my boyfriend. <gasps> And when you say that, your mom looks and she's like, oh, he's <laughs> handsome. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you see Keith is like, oh, hi, Miss Bullhorn. And uh, he looks really awkward and uncomfortable. 
Um, and your mom gives him a big hug. And she's like, well, you keep my matey safe. Hear me, young man? He's like, I'll do my best, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really infatuated with your daughter. I think she's really great. And she's a, a really badass warrior. And she like slaps his arm and she's like, you watch your mouth, sir. Um, and your mom gives you a kiss, matey. And she's like, I'll see you soon. Okay, and don't you worry, I'm gonna keep myself safe. Just like I raised you. And uh, she goes <laughs> off to And we'll join. watch her. We'll watch over her and make her sure she's safe. Yes, so don't worry. So, um, Fatima, yes, you may have the cat. She looks at you and she's like, these terms are acceptable. Isn't that Great. the cat that was whispering, like, doom saying prophecies to you? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Can we do, yes. can we do the changeling check? Or just the weirdness check. I, I pull everyone together. I'm like, Fatima, one moment. Everyone, we gotta, we've been, we've had too many surprises. I, I have memory of a betrayal, uh, some tiefling with red skin, uh, stabbing people with a rapier. Uh, I'm talking about Calderon. Uh, I don't remember that. Calderon? I remember Calderon. <laughs> I don't right. don't you remember? I told you, called her on one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. After you were out, you were. I was asleep. Yes. Yeah. So, sorry. Out, out of character, I thought that you had all forgotten the person who murdered us brutally. No, no, no. no. A few sessions ago. So here's the thing. I remember if uh, there's too much transformation and possession and everything happening. Can we just all as a group collectively kind of like scan the cat, make sure it's okay. Let me do skin the cat. Skin the cat? No, no, no. I'm talking about scanning the cat, Arya. Can I stare into its eyes and do an insight check to see if I think it's a cat or some sort of um, doppelganger creature? If someone has Arcana, that would be useful. So I'm gonna roll perception. Your doppelganger um, spider sense is not going off, and you stare deep into Kit's eyes and go ahead and roll insight. I rolled a 20, non natural. Okay. Uh, I did a 23. Awesome. Inside. So, um, Marty. We are getting the soul of this cat. Marty and Wynn, you are staring each of you into one of Kit's eyes. And uh, after like about a few seconds, Kit like licks his paw and like <laughs> rubs her ear. And then she's like, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> you feel like Kit is a cat, and Kit's whatever cat. happened to Mady may was not Kit's doing. Uh oh, that's a Kit cat. <laughs> <laughs> that's scary. Am I? What? Should we do a perception check on me? No, no. I mean, we saw uh-huh. check me. Am I a changeling? Mady, 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 Mady. I mean, I know I'm dressed like an elf, but Mady, Mady, <laughs> Mady. <laughs> We saw my dad, who my mom is pretty sure is my dad, get possessed. I think the cat was just possessed. Or I was don't... I possessed? Why would you be possessed? Can we roll know. Arcana to make sure she wasn't possessed? <laughs> I had a cat talking to me and I heard it. Something well, weird happened. It's either yeah, a cat or got, cat's I've, fine. I've got Infernal. I, I've got, I, I can smell the stench of, of the demonic. So as, as you all are talking, um, uh, <laughs> oh, shit. <I> hate this. <laughs> the phrase, as you all are talking, the dragon rises up and eats you. <laughs> as you all are talking, Orpheus is riding on Tony's back and she looks at you. And she's like, are you coming or what? Mm. Yes, we're coming. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. Fine. Okay. Awesome. Moving Switch. along. You all head towards the palace. Um, and which is? Which is the not... royal palace where the elected official lives. Um, not and where we stayed when we first showed up. And it's not up, yes. in our highly personalized, very cool bedrooms that Arya really wishes we could And that's where the on top of the roof, the dragonborn, who's definitely not a changeling, is sacrificing some sort of creature, probably Fee. And also probably. Elder Son was there trying to rescue Fee. So, okay. as you get there, you see that there is a dark, ominous purple cloud uh, swirling around the top of the castle. It's is, it like the pur- is it like the purple aura that uh, surrounds Arya when she's doing something? 
Uh, yes, actually, it is. It's um, gonna rain. So, uh, you all are all at full health, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Nearly, not, not quite. Okay, so you can oh. short rest on the ride over there if you want. Oh, cool. I will. Um, yeah, might as well. And also, uh, yeah, so you, you all get there, and as you sort of pull up to the front, um, you see standing outside um, is Mox and uh, Dirge Skip Glider and oh, Calderon. No. So the three of oh, them are no. standing out there guarding the gate. Um, and there are a army of skeletons uh, that surround the palace all the way around on every side. Um, and there are some scarecrows on the, on the bridge leading into the front uh, entrance of the castle. And you see um, Fatima looks at you all and uh, she pulls out another gun and she's like, so are we gonna go kill a god? And that's where we're gonna end for today. So cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you all so much for watching um, this penultimate episode of uh, oh, Loves and Roleplay right. Sovereign of Death. Either we uh. all die next week or we win. <laughs> <laughs> this all led to this. Um, who's the Sovereign of Death? What are they planning? Are the heroes going to be able to stop it? There's so it's many questions. Shit, isn't it? Who we knows? have a lot of questions. <laughs> you have to come back next time to find out. Thank you all so much for watching, for going on this journey Bye. with us, and we'll see you next time for the finale.